Hey, what's up, everybody? I'm shouting out to you today uh, while I'm on vacation, actually. I'm up visiting my uh, parents at their cabin up in beautiful Spirit Lake, British Columbia. And while I've been trying to relax and just chill out, uh, the only thing that's been on my mind has been how to make punchier kick drums. Go figure. So I wanted to share a little tip and technique with you guys today. And one of the things that prevents percussion from being punchy when you're doing things like layering hits, which you should be doing with your percussion, is if you have phase problems. Now to demonstrate for you what that is and then how to correct them, I've loaded up some samples into a drum rack. So I've got a MIDI channel, got a drum rack loaded onto it, and then I've dragged four different synthesized kick drum samples onto this pad here while holding the command key, which creates a multi. So we've got this nested drum rack and we've got these four different synthesized percussion hits from 808s and 909s. These are from a percussion sample pack from Gold Baby. Now, when I play this, I just have a 4-4 kick pattern drawn in here in my MIDI clip. When I play this, have a really, really good listen and note how this sounds. Okay, so we've got layered percussion. We're layering up these individual sounds. And together, the theory is that when you layer percussion, together it sounds fatter and more punchy. However, phase problems can totally rob you and steal any of the punchiness out of your percussion. This kick drum actually sounds really flabby and, and uh, lifeless. And I'm going to show you why. If we dial in here and we zoom in on the actual kick drum waveform, you will see the phase of the kick drum is positive. We have the initial waveform is going up. Now if you have another layered kick drum sample and that waveform is going down, which means they're out of phase, then when you add the waveforms together, when you add a positive and a negative waveform together and you sum it, it's going to equal zero or very close to it depending on uh, the frequency of the waveform. So what we're going to look for is we're going to scan through these samples and see if I'm having any phase problems here. So we go through, we look at the second one, and we're like, oh, that's okay, actually. That's going up, so they're in phase with each other. But then we switch over to the 909, and all of a sudden we see very distinctly we have a problem. This one has uh, is out of phase. It's going down. The waveform's going down. And we look at our next one, which is also a 909 sample, and this one is also going down. So if you're mixing and matching samples from sample percussion packs and things like that, this is a major problem. So what we're going to do is we're going to duplicate this whole track by pressing Command D, and uh, I'm just going to deactivate it. And now I'm going to go ahead and just show you a very simple technique for correcting these phase problems. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the two ones that are starting with their waveform down. We're going to scroll in. We're simply going to take the sample's starting point in the simpler here. We're going to adjust it so that it starts at the beginning of the up part of the waveform. And we want to get it as close to that zero crossing point as possible. So we want to zoom in and we want to get it right there. Okay, there will be, there'll be no uh, popping or clicking or anything like that. Now we're going to do the same thing with the very next one as well because it was out of phase. We're going to take that start point, we're going to drag it, we're going to zoom in further, and we are going to snap it right there. Okay. Now I'm going to activate this and you will hear the difference. Now to effectively A, B between these guys, I'm actually going to just quickly uh, uh, key map these guys to the one key on my keyboard. And that way when I press the one key, notice how their activators switch on and off. So I can activate them both at the same time, then just press the one key to very quickly A, B. So there's the original. Flabby. Here's our corrected version. Punchy, flabby, punchy, flabby, punchy. So areas where you might want to check for and really monitor your phase is usually in percussion. I don't just use it on kick drums. I'll analyze phase for any types of percussion where I'm layering sounds. For example, I'll take a look at my snares and claps because those are oftentimes layered up. You're also going to want to take a look at your phase between your bass and your kick drum. 
as well because a lot of times they might be playing at the same time. So if you have a bass sample or a bass synth that's playing, take a look at its phase in relation to your kick drum as well because bass and kick drum can, uh, when they're out of phase with each other, cause this kind of hollowness. And um, it's easiest to recognize because you'll hear it and it'll sound like it's just missing presence, like it's missing punch. Uh, you can hear it a lot of times with DJs when they're mixing two records together, actually, and they get their mix bang on, and there's this kind of hollow, echoey sound with the kick drum. That's because they are out of phase. So you want to check for this in a variety of different places in your mix, but now you are equipped with the tools to be able to correct those problems when you find them. And that is how to correct phase problems using layered percussion samples in Ableton Live using the start point of the Simpler device. Hope you enjoyed that. Go make some fat beats. Cheers.